Hi everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 5. So, let's continue where we left off. We got our great prophet, which means we can start a religion. It's about time. So, let's talk about the beliefs. Because religion as a whole is redesigned in CPP. Which means most, if not all of these beliefs will be completely different. I'm just going to talk about all of them. So, let's go through all the beliefs one by one. First, we got founder beliefs. And so, we got apostolic tradition, which unlocks the apostolic palace national wonder, which is plus four faith and plus four golden age points, unlocks reformation belief, and receives golden age points when you spread your religion to cities other than your holy city. And the bonus scales with era. So, that's going to be the general theme of the founder beliefs. They unlock a specific national wonder that we can build, and the National Wonder gives you certain things. So next up we got Ceremonial Burial, which is one of my favorites so far. It unlocks the Mausoleum National Wonder, which is plus 5 faith, and you gain faith when an owned unit is killed in battle. And it unlocks Reformation Belief. They all unlock Reformation Belief, so I'm just going to skip that bit. And you receive 25 faith and 50 culture whenever a great person is expended and the bonus scales with era. So this is, in my opinion, one of the better founder beliefs. Next up, we got Council of Elders, which unlocks the Holy Council National Wonder, that's plus four faith, plus five food, and you receive a boost to current science research when a city adopts your religion. And the bonus scales with era. Next up, we got Hero Worship, which unlocks the Great Altar National Wonder, that's plus 5 faith and plus 15% military unit production. And you also receive faith and golden age points when you conquer a city. And the bonus scales with city population and era. This is a pretty good one if you plan an aggressive game. Next up we got Holy Law, which unlocks the Divine Court National Wonder. That's plus 4 faith and plus 6 gold. And you receive faith and science and gold when you purchase a policy and the bonus scales with era. This one isn't too bad. Next up we got Mandate of Heaven. It unlocks the Celestial Throne, National Wonder, that's plus two faith, culture, food, science and gold, and production, and the Holy City produces plus 15% of its yields during a Golden Age. So this is good if you can get a lot of Golden Ages. Then we got Theocratic Rule, which unlocks the Grand Ossuary National Wonder, that's plus 10 faith, and we love the king, they boost the faith, culture, gold, and science output of a city by 15%. Next we got Way of the Pilgrim, which unlocks the Reliquary National Wonder, that's plus 4 faith, plus 2 culture, and 4 art artifact slots. And you receive tourism when you spread your religion to foreign cities, and the bonus scales with era. And finally we got Way of Transcendence, which unlocks the Sacred Garden National Wonder, plus three faith, plus five culture, and plus 300 to all national yields when you enter a new era. And the bonus scales with era. So, I think I'm going to grab the Ceremonial Burial, Founder Belief. That's easily one of my favorites. Which means we're going to get faith when we lose a unit in battle, and more importantly, we'll get faith and culture when we expand great people and it scales with era. Next up we got follower beliefs, so let's just talk about all of them. We got plus one food for every two followers in the city, maximum of plus 15 food. Then we can get cathedrals, which are plus three faith, plus three gold, and one great work of art slot. It also reduces poverty and boosts pressure of religious majority from the city by 25%, and it increases the city's resistance to conversion by 20%, and farms near this city generate plus one gold. So that's pretty good. They are all pretty good. Next up we got churches, which is plus three faith, one great work of music slot, introduces boredom, and boosts pressure. I think most of them boost pressure. This one boosts pressure by 50%, and increases city's resistance to conversion by 20%, all missionaries born in this city can spread religion three times. So this one is good if you plan to spread your religion a lot, 
Which we might want to do. So I might consider churches. Next up we got cooperation. Receive plus 5 to all city yields every time a citizen is born in the city. And bonus scale to Zera. Next, diligence, plus 1 production for every 2 followers in the city, maximum of plus 20. Inspiration, plus 1 culture for every 2 followers, maximum of plus 10. Then we got another unique building. Use faith to purchase, let's see, plus 2 faith, plus 5% food, one great work of music, reduces poverty, plus 5% food in the city, boosts religious pressure by 25%. Reduces, increases city resistance to conversion. Enemy spies in this city cannot assassinate great people or disrupt unit production. Next up we got mastery. Specialists produce plus two of their primary yield. And that's that. That's an interesting one actually. Next we got mosques. Plus three faith, plus three science. One great work of literature slot. Reduces illiteracy. Boss pressure by 25%, increases resistance, and plus 20% culture in the city during Golden Ages. Science is always nice, so this is pretty decent. Next up we got Orders, which is plus 2 faith, and plus 10 experience and moral promotion for land military units produced in this city. Grants additional city hit points and strength. Reduces crime, boosts pressure by 25%, increases resistance by 20%. Then we got Pagodas, plus two faith, plus two culture, one great work of art slot, reduces boredom, boosts pressure by 25%, increases resistance by 20%, plus two to all city yields for every world religion that has at least one follower in this city. So that's a bit of a situational building. It might be good if you have a lot of neighbors who are spreading their religions aggressively. Then we got scholarship, which is plus one science for every two followers in the city. Maximum of plus 15. Then we got another building. Plus 5 faith and plus 4 tourism once you have researched architecture. Reduces illiteracy, boosts pressure by 25%, increases resistance by 20%. And next up, another building. Plus 2 faith, plus 3 production. Great work of literature slot. Reduces crime, boosts pressure by 25%, increases resistance and you get plus 15% science during We Love the King Day. I quite like that one. Then we got plus 1 gold for every 2 followers in the city, maximum of plus 20. And finally, plus 1 faith for every 2 followers in the city, maximum of plus 10. So these are actually pretty tough choices. There's no one obvious choice here. A lot of these are pretty good. So I'm actually not sure what we're going to go for. We could go for churches, but extra pressure isn't necessarily useful on this kind of map. So I think I'll pass on that one. We could always go for science, which was... which one was it? The building. Yeah, mosques. Plus 3 faith, plus 3 science, and plus 20% culture in the city during Golden Ages. We could always go for scholarship which is science every two followers. We could go for production, production is always nice, and we will get extra science during Wheel of the King days. So I kind of like this one. Production is always nice. I might go for this one. At least that's what I'm leaning towards. But there's no one obvious choice here, as you can clearly see. A lot of these beliefs are really quite nice. And they would work just fine. Cathedrals aren't bad. Farms near this city generate plus one gold. Plus three faith, plus one gold. Yeah, this one is really nice for gold. Plus one gold from every farm is actually really damn good. I like that a lot. But I think we'll go for production. So this one, synagogues, yep. And now, since we are playing as Byzantium, we can pick one bonus belief. So there are a lot of options here. We could actually pick another founder belief, like the apostolic tradition, for example. And this is an even tougher choice, because there are a lot of things we can pick here. We can pick 
literally anything. Anything that I just showed you. From any category. That makes Byzantium pretty strong. And they can have some really unique religion combinations. They can have the kind of religion that you cannot get with any other sieve. It's impossible to get with any other sieve. So, let's see, what are we going to grab? It's a tough choice. Let's have a look. Boast science when a city adopts your religion. Okay. I don't want to spread my religion. We could always go for churches, but the extra pressure is just not useful enough on this kind of map. It's still nice. And being able to convert three times with one missionary is quite nice too. What else can we get? Let's have a look. Missionary conversion strength plus 25%. Holy city gains science when owned missionaries spread religion to cities of other religions. I don't think I want that one. We could always go for the gold thing, gold from farms. That's a really nice one. That would be worth quite a lot of money. Let's see. Plus 25% faster border growth, gain 20 faith every time a city expands its borders. Bonus scales with game speed, not bad. What else do we have here? Hero worship. Oh yeah, that's the military one. Okay. I don't think I want that. Divine Court. Receive faith, science and gold when you purchase a policy. Alright. Mandate of Heaven. Plus 2 to all yields. And plus 15% to all yields during Golden Age. I don't think we'll get enough Golden Ages to make it worth it. This one isn't too bad, because spies are quite a bit stronger in Community Patch Project. Plus 2 faith, plus 5% food. And enemy spies cannot assassinate great people or disrupt production. It's not bad. Okay, what else? Specialists produce plus two to their primary yield. Yeah, I actually really like this one, too. That's so good. Huh. I think we might go for mastery. That's just so good, actually. Missionaries and Inquisitors cost 30% less faith. Holy City owner gains plus one happiness. Well, it would be nice to get cheaper missionaries, but I actually really like mastery. It's so good. If the majority religion in the city rival inquisitors and prophets reduce your religious pressure by half instead of full. Okay. We could also go for sainthood. Because we already got ceremonial burial, which will give us things when we expand great people. And with Sainthood, we would get even more faith every time we expand a great person. And it scales with Era. This one is actually quite nice, combined with Ceremonial Burial. I think we'll go for that. But as you can see, there are so many options here, so many good options. There's really no obvious choice. There are so many really nice combos possible with this. Yeah, I think we'll go for Sainthood. I really like that. Yep. Let's go with that. And accept. There, we got our religion. Now, we are getting 11 faith per turn. I did queue up a shrine in here, I think. Yes, I did. Okay. So, we probably want to start spreading our religion. Which means, we could just send missionary to auto-purchase. Or we could buy the synagogue first. Possibly. That is plus two faith and plus three production. I think I'd rather get a missionary first.
Do we want to get a missionary first? We could start spreading a religion to other cities, not ours. To take advantage of sainthood, because you know, that makes sense. Alright, let's set a missionary to auto purchase. That's 210. That's reasonable. And what do we want to do with that worker? Probably help with the road. Just to finish it faster, we'll explore this area a little bit more. And keep moving with that settler. We got a promotion. So that took a while. But that's religion. We still got reformation beliefs. We'll talk about that once we get there. And what are we doing in Constantinople? Cargo ship. We do need cargo ship. Mausoleum requires 19% more global followers. Right. Because we need to get more followers before we can actually build this. Which obviously makes sense. I think we should build cargo ship in a different city. But which one? We are already building one here. Before the lighthouse, perhaps. The lighthouse would be so good in here, though. We could rush it a bit. Yeah, let's rush the lighthouse and then we'll get the cargo ship. That works. Horses. Can we get more gold for this? We can ask for some more. Yeah, he gave us four gold per turn. Not bad. Can we go through here? Nope. I think it's time to go back with that archer. Looks that way. And I see a barbarian. Okay, we might need some help over there. Plantation. And kill that warrior already. It's taking a while, unfortunately. And I want to start that city already. Alright. Another worker is almost done. That should be enough workers for now. And we need to finish this road. There. Alright. Let's keep moving. Where's the barbarian camp? There has to be a barbarian camp somewhere over here. Right, I don't really want to move, but we can start a city after moving. So that's good enough. This is going to be the exact location. Done. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I can't build a road through here anymore. So we'll work on other improvements. I think it's time to just buy these tiles down here and improve them. We kind of need them. So that's what we'll do. And maybe disband that scout. As for production in this city, I'd like to work the wonder, but we need this city to grow a little bit. It will still grow even if we work it. Yeah, let's work it. It's just so good. And we'll rush the monument a bit. We need the border to expand in there. Plantation. We still need more units. Oh, England actually declared war on us. All right. That was slightly unexpected. Now, there's one problem in the current beta build that I'm using. Sometimes you will be stuck in an internal war with one of the AIs because of their logic. Because of the logic they use to offer peace. It's fixed in the newest beta build, but the newest beta build is not compatible with save games. So, I'll have to use the one I'm using until this game is over. I don't think England is really a threat. We don't have too many units. But I suppose we can unlock composite bombmen after this. And we should recruit a few more units. Let's queue up a swordsman in Constantinople or Cataphract. Even before we finish the stoneworks, I'm not going to wait for the barracks. What's our second top production city? This one. Yeah, let's get some cataphracts. These guys are just so good. Alright, fine. I'm not really worried about England. I don't consider them to be a threat. But we will obviously get some defenses. Alright, next. One more city. Yeah, we lost our drummer, unfortunately. We finish mathematics. Alright then. And we can use city bombardment. Hold on, where exactly do we want this city? 
God Horseman needs to die. Yeah, I kind of want the city over here, actually. So we are going in the wrong direction. Get rid of that camp. Maybe I could get someone else to declare war on England. Who are we friendly with? Austria. Gandhi. We could ask Austria. Let's see. Declare war on England. And how much are we willing to pay? I would pay up to 10 gold per turn. Let's say 7. No. Okay. 12. I won't pay more than 15. Yeah, I don't think she will do it. Nope. Okay. That's fine. I don't think I want to sell anything. Nope. Heal up. And... Yes, finish that plantation already. We don't have enough gold to just buy a unit or two, if it's going to be necessary. And see bombardment. Yep, get rid of that. Attack that. Start the plantation. And let's just buy that tile. And probably start working it right away. Right, if I attack him right now, Venice will steal the camp. They will probably steal the camp regardless. But they will definitely do it if I attack right now. Let's change Talasarmens here, so this obviously goes on the farm. We'll go through the cities really quickly. Yeah, we need more improvements over here, clearly. Or some specialist slots, or both. This looks fine-ish, the plantation is actually already done. There. No, we need one more turn. Let's see, I still want Constantinople to grow fast. We will be working the specialists, but after we get more population. 11 turns to get another citizen. 10 turns. Okay, that will do. I should probably send some food, but it's not exactly safe right now when we're at war with England. It's definitely not safe right now. Right, we should use these archers a bit. Send it to the other city. And chop the forest. This should be a mine. I think we should just buy that tile. Before Sidon steals it. Oh, also, that horseman. I don't know if it's safe to start a city here. Right now. It probably isn't. We could buy a spearman for 190. Probably worth it. Or we could buy a cataphract. That's... A better plan, I think. Yeah, I think we should buy a cataphract. It has 20 combat strength, as opposed to 10 on the spearman. That's just way, way better. It's not even close. As for the cargo ship, yeah, it's definitely not safe to use it right now. We could send it from Antioch. Or from this city right here. It's not going to be as good. Not sure if we even have any valid trade routes from that city. We might not. There's masonry and city bombardment. A deal with Enrico and dead. All right. You are at war. Yes, I noticed. Oh yeah, and the war score is a thing now. So if I hover over this, we'll see that war score can range from minus 100 to plus 100. So the bug in the build that I'm currently using is that the peace offer will just stay on impossible until you almost eliminate that sieve from the game. Again, it's fixed in the newest build, but I can't upgrade, uh, update to the newer build because save games aren't compatible. It doesn't happen every single time, but there is a good chance it will happen at some point. Right, Enrico. Let's see. Salt. How much gold can we get from you? How much do we want to ask for? I don't know, 300? No, 200? What? Really? No. Oh, I don't think he's willing to buy it at all. Four gold per 10? Alright, that's fine. 
What's next? We should probably get city walls in most of our cities. I don't think England will attack this one, but it's not that far away. We also need a worker in here, like, really badly. Should just buy one, I think. Yeah, let's just buy one. And just to be safe, we'll get the city walls. It's a bit of a waste of production, but I don't want any surprises. Alright, let's keep moving. We'll just kill that horseman. Okay, there is one valid shade route, but... It might not be safe. I don't know if it's safe. It should be safe-ish. I'm not 100% convinced, but let's use it for now. At least it's safer than shade routes from these cities, obviously. Because there's a Dromon literally right next to it. Let's explore some more. And we can finally move our scout. Chop the forest. Alright, some more cataphracts. We'll be ready. That's the last one in two turns. And we'll finish the stoneworks. And then I could try to build the Parthenon, but I think we have better things to do. We should get some water mills. Yeah, we really have better things to do right now. Just checking what's going on. Alright. Let's do some more damage. Need to get that composite bomb and faster. Let's check the techs. How's England doing in technologies? They are getting 76 from techs. They are just one tech ahead of us. I think that German will get away. Oh well, whatever. Yep, he got away. That's fine. Plus one population. We need some specialists in this city. That would be nice. Okay, so this exact tile for the city, I think, or no, this one. Yeah. Alright, fine. And I think that's going to be the last city for now. I do want that Lake Victoria location, but it's not really safe to send the settler right now. And we have so many cities already, I think we should focus on, you know, actually growing these cities and developing them, as opposed to starting even more cities, as tempting as it is to start a city over here. I'll probably still do it, just a little bit later, if it's still available. I don't want to overextend. And we are already kind of overextending. We spammed quite a few cities. We need to protect them. Because if someone who can actually attack us properly declares war, I won't be able to defend myself. And it's pretty damn easy to lose cities in CPP. It really is. So we seriously need some defenses now. This will be the last city for now. Alright. Let's see then. What do we want first? Probably the well. To speed up production of everything. Yep, sounds good. And go back to Varna with the cataphract. And we leave the spearmen here. Sounds good. Let's keep exploring. I saw a new landmass. Is that road done? Yes. What else do we want? Probably more improvements near Antioch. It needs more stuff in general. Archery into the city. Okay, we have decent defenses now. So, do we want to buy this? I think we should. We should buy both these tiles. But I don't have enough gold for that just yet. So we'll wait a few turns to get gold. What? Oh, barbarians raided our city, destroying relics worth to culture. Oh, that was the barbarian ship, Galay or whatever. A plantation has been destroyed by a horseman. Oh, right here. Also, one thing I didn't mention previously is that if you have pillaged tiles near your city, they will generate extra unhappiness. So if I hover over this, we should see it somewhere. We got minus one from isolation, because we don't have a connection. I'm not seeing a penalty for a pillaged plantation. Alright, but there is a penalty for pillaged tiles. 
Okay, let's see. I should probably bring that Spearman. That sounds like a good idea. I don't think they are going to negotiate yet. It's quite possible that we'll be stuck at war for a very, very long time. Oh, it's you. You cannot be sick. Okay, impossible. All right, fine. This should be a mine. And we'll just grab a plantation here. That's plus two food and plus one gold. Oh, Venice is upset. Well, I don't plan settling any new cities, so sure, I can promise to not settle cities. I have no such plans at the moment. Okay, we still can't get open borders, unfortunately, because we don't have the tech. I'm not buying this tile just yet, because we want to buy tiles near Sidon. Where did that horseman go? Well, we repair our plantation first. He's gone. Alright. Plus 20 gold and plus 5 science. Nice one. This city is up to 7 pop. Not bad. We need more specialist slots here. Shrine is almost done. We still need around 8 more turns to get our first missionary. And Shaka wants horses. Let's ask for more gold this time. We'll sell one horse. No? Okay. Yep, never mind. I don't think I want to sell a horse for less than 3 gold at this point. Because we can use horses for more cataphracts. And these are really damn good. Also for defense. They are very strong and very fast. Yes, alright, now we can attack that guy. And then send our cataphract. And that's almost a kill, damn it. Now he's going to pillage the sheep. Oh well, whatever. I'll just send the worker in that general direction right away. There's our last settler. Well then, yeah, I had it in the queue. Maybe we should consider a city somewhere over here. It wouldn't be a very good one though. I still want Lake Victoria, I'm not gonna lie, it's such a good location. But we'll need an escort for that settler. Which is fine, I can give him an escort. This seems like an island that could fit at least one city. So, worker. Let's get another mine for Antioch. What about the horse? I think I'll keep the horses. Yep, let's just keep the horses. Next. Okay. Six gold. I'm not going to sell it for less than six. He accepted six. That's fine. Austria wants six gold per turn. We could give them six gold per turn to improve our relations. This is going to be a significant boost. I think I'll accept. It's not the end of the world. And we could use some friends. Let's see. Yeah, we have quite a few bonuses. We could actually request help. Not that we really need help right now, but we can do it. So how's England? Well, minus one war score. Yep, so peace is impossible. I think we're going to stay at war for a pretty long time here. At least we killed that horseman. Alright, yes, it's me. Did you miss me? She didn't even pillage the sheep. That's fine. I'll give that settler a cataphract escort. Yeah. As for the workers, we should buy these two tiles already. It will upset Venice a bit. But you never know, there might be resources here. There might be coal or aluminum on one of these tiles. And if I don't buy them soon, we will lose them to Venice. They won't like this, but I don't care about their opinion. I mean, I do kind of care about their opinion, but I want these tiles. I'm okay with getting a small penalty. And I'm pretty sure we'll get a small penalty for this. Okay. They believe we are building new cities too aggressively. No. Why would they believe that? We do have several penalties, but we also have quite a few positives. Alright. What about the settlers? 
Where do we need improvements, actually? Good question. Other than Antioch and Constantinople. We need our borders to expand more. 30 turns. I think I'll have to spend some gold. I'll just send the worker here for now. Because we need multiple improvements near these two cities. Yeah, I guess we'll promise we won't be doing this again. Because I don't plan doing it more. We did get a new penalty, but that's okay. It's unfortunate, but I wanted these two tiles. We would get a much bigger penalty for stealing that land with a great general in the future. City bombardment. Yeah, England is coming again. We can upgrade to composite bombmen now, so let's do that. Do we have any more archers? No, just that one guy. We should get more archers, actually. How's our capital doing? Let's redo this. I think we should send some food with a shade route. I want to work some of these slots. Mostly the engineer and the scientist. How much food can we get now? Is it going to be enough to get some growth? It won't be very quick growth, that's for sure. I'm giving up really nice tiles here. 24 turns. Well, alright. I suppose that's fine. Yep, that's fine. As for research, let's go for philosophy now. Okay, sounds good. And we got a promotion. Shock one for the flood bonus. You will stay in Varna. And you will just chill around here in Nicomedia. Grab some horses. Now, we could build a fort here to get a canal, because forts do work as canals in CPP. Which means this would definitely be a good tile for a fort. No doubt about, no doubt about that. Can we talk with England? Probably not yet. Oh, it's you. No. We can't? Nope. Oh. Yeah, apparently we still have business to settle. <laughs> sure, give us more experience, I don't mind. We'll attack some more. I can't shoot it with the composite bombing just yet, unfortunately. But it will go down on the next turn, unless it moves away. Alright. Improve the horses. We got quite a lot of horses. So a lot of units. Another Dromon. They will just keep sending Dromons, I think. Looks like that's what they are doing. Okay, who built how many wonders? I've not checked that in a while. Mostly Gandhi. But not a lot of wonders are gone. Alright, I'm going to make a cut here and continue in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.